This is the June Odd 8 exam, page 4, as much of as, as we can cover in 10 minutes. Question 11. An airplane flies with a velocity of 750 kilometers per hour, 30 degrees south of east. So that means if it was going east, it's really going 30 degrees south of east at 750 kilometers per hour. The magnitude of the eastward component. Well, part of its velocity is carrying it south. Part of its velocity is carrying it east. And if I look at it, it's the x component that's carrying it east. So I've got this formula that says uh, any vector's x component is equal to any vector times the cosine of the angle. So in this case, the velocity in the x is going to be equal to the velocity times the cosine of the angle. The velocity is 750 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 is 0.8 something times 750. That's going to get us up to 650 kilometers per hour eastwards. This is greater than 750, so it won't be that. And um, those are wrong answers. Question 12. An 80 kilogram skier, mass is 80 kilograms, slides on waxed skis along a horizontal surface of snow at a constant velocity while pushing on his poles. What is the horizontal component of the force pushing him forward? Well, the question is, what's the force pushing him forward? The question is, why does he have a, uh, to have a force pushing him forward at all? He's moving. Why doesn't he continue to move at a constant velocity? And the answer, of course, is friction. And so in order to go forward, he has to overcome friction. So this is a question about the force of friction. Force of friction. And I can go find the force of friction... And there it is, force of friction is equal to mu, force normal. In case I forget, mu is, uh, right at the bottom, the coefficient of friction. So the force of friction is equal to mu, force normal. Well, force normal is the force, he's got weight downwards, mg, pulling him downwards. And the normal force is that force that's keeping him from sinking into the snow. So there must be a, uh, an upward force equal to his weight. So force normal could be thought of as mg. And mu, the coefficient of friction between wax skis and snow. And on the front of my formula sheet, I have approximate coefficients of friction. Um, Wax skis on snow. There it is. Now, if he was stationary, just trying to get moving, he would need to overcome this frictional force. But he's already moving, so he simply has to overcome 0 0.05, a mu of 0 0.05. So it's 0 0.05 times 80 kilograms times acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And... Um, so that's going to be real close to 40 newtons when you get the calculator out and punch them in. Question 13. A 1750 kilogram car. So the mass is 1750 kilograms. Traveling at a constant velocity of 15 meters per second. Constant speed, because he's changing direction. We're going to put a V in here anyway. This is tangential velocity. And he's going around a horizontal circular track with a radius equal to 45 meters. The magnitude of the centripetal force. So force centripetal equals. Now that looks like something off the formula sheet. So I go looking, and here I find force centripetal is equal to mass times acceleration centripetal. And acceleration centripetal is V squared over R. So I'm just going to combine the two equations. I'm going to say my force centripetal is equal to m v squared over R. Calculator time. You plug it in. Don't forget to square the v. Multiply it by 1750. 
and divide it by 45. And I think this is the number that will appear on the screen. Question 14. A 0.45 kilogram football, so the mass of the football is 0.45 kilograms, It's traveling at a speed of 22 meters per second. And it's caught by an 84 kilogram stationary receiver, so the mass of the guy is 84 kilograms. If the football comes to rest, so the final velocity is zero, so the change in velocity is also 22. Uh, if the football comes to rest in the receiver's arms, the magnitude of the impulse imparted to the receiver. Impulse. So I go over to the formula sheet and I find, uh, here we go. Impulse is the letter J. And I look for impulse. And J is force times time. Well, I have neither force nor time. But it also says that impulse is equal to a change in momentum. Impulse causes a change in momentum. And momentum is mass times velocity. Well, the mass won't change of the football, but its velocity will. So I can say that the impulse is equal to mass times its change in velocity. So I can say J is equal to M delta V. And because it's the football that's changing its velocity, it's the mass of the football that I care about. So a calculator, a 0.45 times 22. Here we go. That looks good. 15. A lot of questions that are worded this way. Carpenter hits a nail with a hammer. Compared to the magnitude of the force the hammer exerts on the nail, the magnitude of the force the nail exerts on the hammer, this is a... Uh, uh, for every uh, action force, there's an equal and opposite reactionary force. The correct answer is the same. Uh, the nail does some moving because of transfer of momentum. However, the force at contact is uh, the same for both of them. Question 16. As a meteor moves from a distance of 16 Earth radii to a distance of 2 Earth radii from the center of the Earth, the magnitude of the gravitational force between the meteor and the Earth becomes... Well, the formula here is uh, the force of gravity is equal to gravitational constant times the mass of one, mass of other, divided by the distance separating the centers squared. So the force of gravity is g m1 m2 divided by r squared. Well, this is in fact a, um, a proportionality question. They don't give you numbers, so they're not looking for numerical value. So you can essentially call all those numbers 1. And so you can say that the force is proportional to uh, uh, the inverse of r squared. So in the first case, it's uh, 1 over 16 squared. And in the second case, it's 1 over 2 squared. Well, 16 squared is, uh, what about, 256. 2 squared is uh, 4. So uh, that's the difference between the two events. So if I do uh, 256 divided by 4, I find out how many times uh, this force has increased, and in fact, 64 times. So we read the question again. Um, as it moves from this one to this one, the force goes up. And um, it's going to be uh, 64 times.